You know, my friends, it's a very interesting evening to have a video. Everything on the television is about politics right now. Oh, you can go and watch a movie or go on Hallmark and see some Christmas stuff that's kind of fun. But if you go into the news, it's all about the election. I was talking with a friend of mine from Missouri um, about the election, and she actually gave me an idea about a video, and I'm going to share it with you in just a minute. Heavenly Father, teach us what we need to know about 1 Peter 4, 8. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. Many of the people that uh, I associate with and have Bible study with, they, they use the New American uh, Standard and some use the, uh, um, the other um, more modern ver versions other than the King James. First, Peter 4.8 talks about charity and talks about in the King James and it's love in the other translations. So I'm going to use one of the modern translations because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. First Peter chapter 4, verse 8 says, Above all, that means above everything, above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. What a powerful verse of scripture that is. Not necessarily used very much, um, you know, to prove a point that uh, um, God can use any verse of scripture um, to lead people to his son Jesus. Now, in, in the time past before there was anything at all, I imagine God the Father, God the Son Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit were together like they always are, and God said, we're, we're going to create some people. And uh, Jesus, you're going to be the Savior of these people because they're not going to be able to live the kind of lives that we live. We are perfect in, in all our ways and we don't sin and um, they are not going to be able to do that. So you're going to have to be a substitute for them, pay for their sins that they commit. Um, when they receive you as Lord and Savior, we're going to make you the Messiah. You're going to be the one that opens up the door to eternal life. Everybody else will have eternal death. That's the way I envision it, way back before there was anything. So God wanted a plan of salvation, and he chose Jesus to be the plan of salvation. But when Jesus came into the world, he came into the world as a baby. Yeah. Jesus decided, uh, um, or God decided for Jesus, he'd come into the world as a baby, um, he would use, God would use a, a virgin Mary, uh, a woman that never had any sexual relationships with anybody, and the Holy Spirit would touch her, um, make her pregnant, she would come to f fruition, and, and uh, you would be born. You would still be 100% God, because you're always going to be God, but you were going to live your life as a 100% man. And you were never going to sin. You would never sin during your lifetime. Wow. We don't go a day without sinning. Maybe a bad thought. Maybe we swear. Maybe um, um, we think bad, evil thoughts about some people. Mm, I've heard a lot of evil things said about all this political stuff going on. I've heard a lot of that lately. Man fell through Adam to sin, and God knew that he would, and, and he 
took care of that through Jesus. Now, here's my point. Notice in that verse of Scripture, it says, above all, love each other deeply, deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. When Jesus went to the cross, when he suffered your shame and my shame, and he took care of the sins of the world in those darkest hours, he was loving the worst part of every person that ever lived. He was loving away their problems. He is the personification of love. It was love that conquered sin. It was love that made Jesus resurrect on the third day. You see, while Jesus was suffering, we knew he was going to die. The physical body was going to die, but not the spirit. He went down and announced into, into the Hades um, what was going on. And uh, then he took the saints up into heaven. And he showed himself in his resurrected body to many people, but especially to the apostles. You are going to have the same kind of resurrected body that Jesus has. Franklin Graham is on TV a lot lately, and he has a little blurb about how to get saved. I really like it. I, I think it's very effective, and I think probably a lot of people have come to the Lord through his message. Uh, Franklin Graham um, simply uh, states that uh, um, Jesus isn't dead. He's alive and able to save you from your sins. He's already done it. My friends, he's already done it. Love each other deeply. Love your neighbor. Love your, your, your boss at work. Love your teacher. Love your grocer, the one that delivers your newspaper. Well, probably don't get a newspaper anymore. <laughs> love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Thank you, Father God. An obscure verse of scripture that doesn't get too much play is so very, very powerful. Thank you, Jesus. We pray in your precious name. Amen. I love you all. You have a great week. I'll catch up, catch up with you a little bit later on in the week. Bye-bye.